Happy first day of winter, everyone. If you're watching this on the day the video goes live, I've had a bee in my bonnet for a while to do a Valhallen themed snow globe with a couple of Valhallen warriors trudging across the snow. So I ordered myself a little snow globe kit from Amazon. It wasn't expensive, I think eight or nine dollars, and comes with uh, four parts. It's a little clear plastic globe, this little inset where you'll glue the models on top of that. That'll become the bottom of the snow globe. And the set, as it was shipped, came with this not super great kind of foam washer that was meant to provide the waterproof seal, but it didn't really work and it leaked a little bit. So I ran out to my local hardware store and found a two and three quarter inch o-ring kind of a rubber o-ring that was exactly the right size it just fits right inside the cap of the snow globe kit so with that in place we can then screw that on and that rubber washer will provide the waterproof seal that'll at least uh, make me feel comfortable putting this on top of my miniatures cabinet so with that in place this is just a, a quick test run to make sure that the rubber washer fits get it all screwed together show you how it fits together but that's a uh, pretty easy so with that we've got some water in there we've got some some snow bits we use the army painter snow flock which i tested out and seems to work fine right now this is just plain water and is a little thin but we'll add some glycerin to the water later to thicken up the water so this is not a painting video it's a snow globe video so i'm going to skip the painting bit and show you the little diorama i made i built it on top of a 60 millimeter base I used hot glue to build up the snow on the kind of the, the basic shape of the snow on the base, um, painted it up using two old metal, metal Warhammer 40,000 Valhallen Guardsmen and a couple of bits from my scenery bin. And now I'm going to take some Gorilla Glue and brush that on top of the painted white hot glue base bear, you know, kind of base layer of snow. And just put that all over the base gorilla glue is water curing glue which means two things it's perfect for a snow globe because being in the water it's totally waterproof i'm actually going to use a little spritz of water to speed up the, the curing of the glue the other thing that it means is that it will wreck your brushes using a brush with gorilla glue basically means that it's going to be the last time you use that brush so to dress up the base just a little bit um, I wanted to make this a pretty quick, easy project, nothing fancy here, but I spray painted that cap that you saw earlier black, and I'm going to snap on some silver paint. Um, in this case, it's a mixture of Pro Acryl, bright and dark silver, but you could use whatever kind of medium silver strikes your fancy. So with this, I'm trying to get kind of a brushed metal effect. If you'll notice that all the brush strokes are going in the same direction, that kind of gives a little bit of that lining effect that you get with a, a brushed metal. Kind of put some paint on and then just go up and down. I'm not actually dry brushing. I'm, I'm painting, but I'm intentionally using kind of a fast, rough brush strokes and having them all aligned in the same direction. A little hint of a, a brushed metal texture. Um, super quick and easy. I, I wanted to, this to be a project that I could you know start and finish in about an afternoon. So to put a waterproof layer on the paint, just in case there was any gaps in the primer, or scratches that I didn't notice. I didn't want any water getting in between the layer of paint and the metal miniatures. I am going to absolutely slather these miniatures in a gloss varnish. In this case, I'm using the brush on the Vallejo Mecca gloss varnish. I've really been impressed with the Mecca varnishes, but if you had some lacquer based gloss varnish, that might be better. So we've given uh, it overnight. To let the varnish dry make sure that it's fully cured and you can see how glossy and shiny that is with, and hopefully that'll provide a nice waterproof layer in between the paint and the, the water that is going to be soaking in indefinitely and then for our last step before we get this all assembled is going to be to take some uh, hot glue here we've got our hot glue gun heated up um, we're using the gorilla glue brand hot glue which i've, I've generally been enjoying and to glue this on um, what I'm going to try to do is do a zigzag pattern on the cap here. My thought is to avoid any circles that might catch air, so I want to make a pattern in the glue that air can escape from. And then before that glue has a time to harden, I'm just going to press the diorama on top of the cap there. 
Let's sit just like that. That 60 millimeter base is a perfect fit for the snow globe kit that I ordered, which was just a nice little happy coincidence. It looks like the air should be able to get out. I haven't created any air pockets there. Just give that a good press. Hot glue dries relatively quickly. So next step is to mix up some liquid and put it all together. Starting with a generous dollop of Army Painter snow texture. This is my first snow globe attempt. I do not put myself forward as a snow globe making expert, but it was a fun little project and we'll uh, maybe we'll do an update in a year or so and see how this held up. So to build the actual combination of liquids that's gonna go in the final snow globe, we're taking water that I've boiled to disinfect it. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of glycerin, which is a thick kind of oily substance that will thicken up the water a little bit um, and hopefully make the snow float a little bit more. Um, as you'll see at the end, I probably could have added one more tablespoon of glycerin, but I was listening to the internet, followed a recipe I found on the internet, but maybe a third tablespoon would be better. And I'm adding four tablespoons of rubbing alcohol. And hopefully what this does is in, you know, kind of inhibit the growth of any organisms or beasties that are still alive, either on the miniatures um, or on the snow. I did disinfect the inside of the globe with rubbing alcohol, and I boiled the water to try to eliminate as much life from the grimdark snow globe as possible, as that seemed appropriate. So with that mixture of rubbing alcohol, glycerin, um, and water, we're just gonna pour that on top of a generous helping of the Army Painter snow flock. And I'm gonna fill this up to the tippy tippy top. I know that this is gonna overflow, um, but I wanna make sure that it's as full as possible. So I'm trying to get as little air in as possible. The other thing that I don't want in there is whatever that green thing is. I spotted something, some rogue bit of something floating around in there, but I'll just fish that out. And now we've got the uh, Valhallen diorama that I made, which I've hot glued to that cap you saw earlier. I'm just gonna try to slowly and gently push that cap with the glued on diorama into the snow globe, trying to let whatever air is in there out um, while still not pressing too hard. This, this whole thing is not you know super high quality construction. This was a $9 snow globe kit trying to be gentle with it. And then I'll screw the cap on with the black rubber O-ring in place. Get that in there. Give it a nice little tighten. And that's it. Um, this is a really fun little afternoon project. Um, you know, once you've got the supplies gathered, and I'll link to all of those down below. <laughs> really, I just was tickled pink with this. I've, I love the Imperial Guard for 40K. It was my first 40K army. I've had this idea in my head for a while, but it was, it was really fun to make it happen. That's what this hobby's all about, making cool stuff happen. And here we go, the final assembled Valhallen Snow Warriors trooping through Winter Wonderland. Well, hopefully you're staying warm out there and having a good holiday season. To all of my new subscribers who joined today, thanks to my friends at Monster Fight Club, welcome. We have got lots more cool stuff in the works. So if you haven't subscribed, do that now, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon for our next Jolly Lark.